Hello, my name is Håkon and welcome back to another little typewriter video today. Uh, I've got a box here in front of me. Sorry, oh, that was a bit noisy. Um, got some grime on it. That's hard to wash off. Um, otherwise, it's a box in good condition. If um, you can't really see it from this angle, what it is. Uh, maybe if I do like this, you might recognize the color combination there. Uh, if you know anything about typewriters, you would know that this, well, also you would see the video title, wouldn't you? You would know this is an Olympia. And I'll take the lid off and move it out of the way. So this is an Olympia SM5. Uh, of course, um, Olympia, they used to have three different size typewriters um, throughout most of their Certainly the post-war history of Olympia, they had three categories of typewriter. SF, which are the small compact ones, um, like the um, uh, Traveller Deluxe was part of that series, the Olympia SF, the, um, oh, what's it called again now? The Olympia Splendids, of course. Um, uh, and then you had the SM series, which has the medium-sized portables, like this one. This is quite a small medium-sized portable, actually. Uh, quite compact for what's considered the medium size. And then you had the bigger ones, the full-size standard office machines, SG series. Uh, of course, SG stands for Schreibmaschine Groß. Uh, SM, Schreibmaschine Mittel, and the F in SF is for flach, flat, rather than for small. Um, so that's what they call them, they call them flat, medium, and big typewriters. I'll just take this out of the box completely. There's a nice mechanism here for attaching it to the box. So I'll just need to push these down and lift it up, and then pull it out, and you can see there's a sort of a brackets back here so when you put it back in you slide into those and there's uh, some notches at the back there and uh, then it uh, attaches to this base which is a very very good design as you would expect from a German typewriter. Now the SM5 doesn't get a lot of good press compared to the other SM typewriters for some reason. It seems to be the sort of the little brother of the SM4 and the SM3 and people don't really put as much value on it and it doesn't seem to be that many of them around either. Um, the reason I got this particular one is might be obvious if you have a look at the keyboard here. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, I do keep mentioning how I like different keyboards. Uh, but of course, being a Norwegian, uh, there's uh, been one particular keyboard, well, two really, that I've been on the lookout for, but I haven't found a good uh, option for yet. And that is uh, this one, because on this one, I've got my Norwegian slash Danish letters here. The Ash, the Ö, I'm not sure what the official name for the last letter is in uh, in English, and the O, the A, Ö, O, and the letters that I used in Danish and Norwegian. Um, this is, um, if you look at it closely and you know about this, you would know this is a Danish one and not a Norwegian one. How do you tell? Well, there are two things, actually. Uh, on a Norwegian keyboard, the Ö is on this key and the A is on this key. So those two letters have swapped around for some bizarre reason. I don't know why that would be. It doesn't make any sense when you think about it. It would be so much easier if... In Norway, you use the same keyboard as you did in Denmark because then you could just buy a Danish typewriter and you'd be good to go. Um, another significant difference is that on a Danish typewriter, you also have one dead key with two accents. You have the acute accent and you have the diaresis or umlaut dots as well. Those do not exist on a Norwegian keyboard. And this is actually one reason why I technically prefer a Danish keyboard because um, the acute accent is used in Norwegian. Uh, we also use a grab accent uh, very rarely, but um, and but you do use an acute accent. You don't have to. It's an optional 
diacritic, but I do like using them. So um, therefore, I've been a bit sort of apprehensive about getting a Norwegian typewriter because I would not get those on that. But on the Danish one, it is fine. So all I have to do when I'm typing Norwegian now is to make sure I don't hit the wrong key here because that could happen quite easily. I'm used to a Norwegian computer keyboard and of course those are in the opposite order. Um, otherwise, what else is there to say about it? Um, it's got a carriage lock here and the carriage lock also locks the keys so you can't push the keys now. So this protects the typewriter very well during storage, transportation, and uh, also indeed in the mail if you ship it. Uh, and this right here, that's the carriage lock there. And now you can move the carriage. Nice bell sound there, I would say. Um, it's got the ribbon selector down here, black, stencil mode, or uh, red. And of course, as usual, I put on a new ribbon and it's all black because I do tend to, uh, I'm not sure, I've never been a big fan of typing in red. Um, so what I do, of course, when the ribbon starts wearing out a bit, I can move it from the black setting down to the red setting and I've still got more black ribbon left as long as it hasn't dried out properly, of course, which takes ages. I mean, it takes decades. You can still use a, a decade old, decades old ribbon and still get some life out of it. Uh, another thing I really like about this one is it's got a nice color, a nice sort of cream color, a bit of yellowing to it, which is uh, a little bit strange, but I actually quite like it. It's sort of a, almost like a patina. I'm, I'm not sure if this actually is part of the finish, but it looks like it is underneath the outer varnish. So it is possible that that actually is part of the way it was made, but I'm not sure about that. In any case, the chassis here, the uh, or the case, the um, does match the keys really well. So we've got the green here of the Olympia logo, very nice, matches the carriage handle there, and also the shift keys, and the key color matches the uh, rest of the typewriter. It looks really nice. Um, nice carriage return arm with a sort of nice subtle spoon shape there. Um, it does have a tab, but tabs are set manually on this one because this is not a highly specified model. So if you look at the back here, we've got the tabs here. So you set them manually like so, uh, which is quite all right, actually. Um, sometimes that is actually easier than uh, an automated kind of tab system. And you set the margins here with these levers here, uh, like so. Um, quite nice and easy. Um, another thing I like about this one, actually, uh, if you look at the back here, it's got the plaque, the badge here, the tag from, usually this is where very often you just get this one. It says Olympia Werke AG Wilhelmshaven made in Western Germany, but on this one you have both the made in badge and you got the importer's badge as well, a combined one. So this says Olympia Kulturmaschine AS, Kopenhagen, Westerbrugel, uh, Sön, and it says Aarhus, uh, Sundergal, Odense, etc. So, um, which is really nice. I've never seen that before on a typewriter where you have a combined maker's badge and trader's uh, or importer's badge on the typewriter. So I thought that's uh, a really cool thing to have. And sometimes these badges are actually missing from typewriters uh, for some reason. Usually, when I see these missing, it is from typewriters that could be made, have been made in different countries. So for instance, if you have a Swiss or a German typewriter, that also was made in say Yugoslavia or Brazil. Sometimes I see the badges missing because the people selling them on eBay, I think this is a thing that people do on purpose actually, they will try to give the impression it was made in Germany or made in Switzerland, but it was actually made somewhere else. So they remove the badge 
and try to sell it for more money because then people might think it was the model that was made in uh, Switzerland or Germany. But um, because that's, yeah. Um, these things happen. Right, so in this one, uh, of course, I can type in Norwegian, uh, which is brilliant. Um, so I'll just try some typing now, see how it works. So there's, um, there's one thing about this, actually, this the platen release mechanism feels a bit off. There's something mechanically wrong here, maybe with a spring. It does work, but it's, it sounds wrong as well. Um, otherwise, this is actually really good order. Um, so, but what I've, I've been trying to do, because about the same time as I got this typewriter, I was thinking, how does it work with carbon-free copy paper uh, or non-carbon paper, NCP paper? So I bought uh, just a few sheets now of, you probably remember this from forms and things. So you have your front there, and then the second page, you've got the yellow and the pink, and the blue, um, this one is not attached together because this is for printing in the laser printer. So what you do is you print the same thing on all the four colors and then you stack them together in the right order and then you can use it as a form to fill in, for instance, with your copies. Uh, but I thought, how does this work on a typewriter? And I would say I'll, something has been typed here, but that's on a different typewriter. So I'll try it on this one now. So I'm going to put this in, so we go, and this is actually quite all right for this typewriter to get in there. Okay, so, um, so let's try this a little bit, see how it works. We've got our line distance, let's just put it to, so it's single, one and a half or two, double line spacing. I'll put it on one and a half, that's my default. Uh, okay, nice color on the ribbon there. You can see you can see the other typewriter that's been used is a much smaller type. Uh, so this is uh, ten characters per inch. Um, uh, this is probably from my Olympia Traveler Deluxe 11 characters per inch. It's quite a bit smaller, um, it looks like. Uh, I think, well, no, it looks much smaller, actually. Um, usually I like the smaller type on typewriters. I have on, um, I go on typewriter forums on Facebook and people go on about how they want ones with a big type. Uh, and all they can get are the, uh, so they, they want the, Pika, I always mix these up. I think Pika is the one with 10 characters per inch and Elite is the one with 12. So people find lots of, who want to get Pika typewriters, they find lots of Elites. Um, I quite like the smaller ones actually, but this is a quite a nice font. Um, And also, I'll write, yeah, I can also skrive på norsk. Uh, so, yeah, I can also write in Norwegian. Uh, and we got the Norwegian letters like so. So, we got the nice letters there. So, let's just see how this works with the copy now. And let's do this. And so we got a first, a yellow copy is looking quite good. Uh, of course, the thing about these multi-page ones, and of course also if you use regular uh, carbon paper in between, each consecutive new copy is going to be a little bit more sort of blurred at the edges. So this one is quite, quite sharp. Pink one, a little bit blurrier, but still quite easy to read. And the blue one is still looking quite good, actually. So, yeah, it's a little bit fainter, but still legible. I didn't type very hard now. I don't have to type very hard on this uh, typewriter. But I suppose if I was doing uh, doing this to make sure that I got all the copies really nice and sharp, I might type a little bit harder for the sake of the... Uh, or the blue copy. Uh, of course, now that the ribbon is new and it's so black, it doesn't feel like typing very hard. I'll just uh, try, try one more time there and type a little bit harder. 
Oh, let's see. So let's just compare. Uh... Right, so I wrote no skriver jag med lite mer kraft blir det bättre. So and now I'm writing with a bit more force. Will it improve? So let's have a little look and see. Uh, look at the last page here. And that is looking better. It's still a little bit weaker than the other pages, but that is fine. I actually quite like the uh, aesthetic of something that's written uh, with carbon paper. So this is one of the things I wanted to do, actually. Um, as part of the typewriter nostalgia, I also wanted to use more carbon paper. I do like the aesthetic of a typed page like this, but also there's something special about a carbon copy as well. Um, it looks different than uh, the original and um, it's got a nice look to it. Um, I also do have some, uh, both some new carbon paper and I've also got some vintage carbon paper that I haven't tried properly yet. Uh, but I will do that in the video one of these days. So yeah, that is working really well. Um, I only bought a small pack because I wanted to see it first and see how it works. Uh, because most of the time, when you if you try to buy this kind of paper, uh, very often you only get it in bulk because this is used in in offices for forms and things, and it's not something you usually would need in a very small quantity. Uh, and you also get the ones with the tractor um, attachment on the sides for the good old-fashioned dot matrix printers as well, which I quite like uh, the look of. Uh, and that's another thing I like the aesthetic of is, is a dot matrix printer because that's also a nostalgic thing for me. Um, so quite a nice, simple typewriter to use. Very comfortable typing action. You don't have to push too hard. Uh, and also the having the Norwegian letters means I can type in Norwegian with this. I do have another typewriter that do have the Norwegian letters, but that is a modified Italian keyboard. And so the letters are in the completely wrong place. Um, and it's got some other quirks as well. I will show that in another video, but um, this is quite a nice one. Let's have a little look under the hood. It's a bit loose, actually, the hood here. Um, Seems the uptake spool is not keeping the ribbon too tight. That's all right, though. Uh, not a big deal. Um, that's the tab there. There's the carriage lock over there. Uh, no touch control on this, of course, because it's a basic model. Uh, but the standard touch weight of an Olympia um, SM32 nine uh, they're actually quite comfortable to use and of course this uh, also this has still has the carriage shift but it's quite well balanced it doesn't feel too heavy still do it comfortably with my little finger um so it's well balanced not yeah so some typewriters you actually have to push quite hard to make sure you get that um so it's a nice relatively light middle-sized portable typewriter from Olympia in uh, a lovely color combination, cream and a sort of a mint, minty kind of, uh, minty kind of green, I suppose. So yeah, so that is my latest typewriter acquisition and probably my last for a long time because this was sort of one of my holy grails, one of the things I was looking for uh, in terms of keyboard layouts was uh, a Danish one. So once I saw this um, available in um, in Britain, um, I just had to go for it. Uh, the thing about finding typewriters with a Norwegian or Danish keyboard is there aren't that many of them on the market. Uh, that is to say it's not on the international market because uh, both in Denmark and in Norway, the most popular websites for selling things are domestic. So you have auction sites and buy or sell sites that are used by Norwegians and Danes 
but it's generally geared only towards selling within the country. Um, and you don't see so many people selling things on eBay, for instance, from Norway or Denmark. Uh, and it is harder to find something. And if you do find something on the local sites in Denmark or Norway, of course, sometimes this tends to be a bit pricey as well. And you would have to pay for quite expensive shipping and also taxes might be added on top of it. So I did want to find one that was for sale in Britain and I found this one which was for sale in Scotland even I think it was in Edinburgh I believe the seller was located so there we have it uh, a lovely typewriter I do like the SM5 actually I do have an SM4 as well um, it feels the SM4 feels a bit heavier to type on um, that might be the individual typewriter because these do change over time um, I still haven't checked the date for this one, um, exactly when it was made. Uh, I'll have a little look and maybe I'll put it in the description or um, if I can figure it out. So, But of course it is quite old and of course if a typewriter is used regularly through uh, decades, um, depending on how it's used, how hard the keys are hammered on, etc., it will change slightly the mechanical properties of each individual typewriter so i've got two identical models of typewriter for instance uh, i've got an Oli two olivetti letter 22s that are practically identical um, but mechanically they feel different um, and this could also be the case for the olympias so but my sm4 does feel heavier to use than this so i'm not sure if that's uh, the model or if it is the individual typewriter. I, I, I like both of them. Um, so yeah. So this is my new toy and I can now finally type a bit more in Norwegian, which I would like to do actually. So um, yeah. So I think that's all I had to say about it today. I can't think of anything else I wanted to mention now. Um, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed having a little look at another model of typewriter from my collection and also looking at the copy or the uh, carbon free copy carbonless copy paper i'm not sure what the actual most common term is uh, for this kind of paper um which i thought was quite a nice aesthetic especially like the yellow one i'm not sure actually uh, it has occurred to me that this is actually the order that it's meant to be in but because they are loose i haven't tried swapping them around and seeing how they behave in the different order i'm not sure uh, how exactly because the chemicals that are creating the writing are on the sheet above i think i'm not sure exactly uh i'll, I'll have a little look at that one of these days and see if i can swap things around but for now this is the standard order so yellow pink blue in that order so right so i hope you enjoyed that uh thank you very much for watching and uh i'll see you back again next time with some other video of mine whether it's about typewriters or something else and uh, if you enjoyed it please like share comment subscribe and join me on patreon as well if you want to see more of my videos and you want to encourage me to be creative and do more on youtube and elsewhere so thanks again and goodbye for now bye bye